the story about the whales. The story about the whales, see. I understand it's a fish story and all this stuff. It is a big fish. But what happened years ago here in Lubeck, Maine, there was a whale got tangled up in the fisherman's lines way off, somewhere off a quarter head. You whale to see then, see. And it drifted in the shore. It just couldn't swim. You know, the tide carried it in, and it landed on the beach over here in Lubeck. Not too far from here, see. I saw it. I was down there. Oh, it was big. I couldn't tell you how long or... The whale was roughly 55 to 56. 56 and a half feet long. A 70-foot animal. That's almost the size of an 18-wheel truck. To me, it was huge. It was huge. It was huge. It was laying down, it would be as high as this ceiling. It was the largest animal I ever saw. No wonder in the Holy Bible it says, Jonah went into the belly of the whale. There was plenty of room there. That mouth was a big one. It was laying there right on top of the beach. And it was laying on its side. I remember it was blackish, grayish was color. Grayish it color. wasn't gray anymore. He wasn't grayish, blackish. It was it mostly was black, gray, and, black white. and white. He was white, well, whitish, grayish. And there was a lot of wounds on it, old scars. What it looked like was a vicious animal to me. I mean, it was a monster. But I wasn't frightened because it was dead. Dog, its mouth happened to be open. Its mouth happened to be open. It was a dead fish, but its mouth happened to be open. It might have been uh, middle of August or so. Yeah, August, Can't September. Yeah, I can't. Sure. It, yeah. Evidently, it washed up in the night, and someone spotted it after daylight laying there on the beach. That was uh, early in the morning. The word had started to spread that this whale had washed ashore, and people started coming in. I went down by myself, but there were plenty of people around. Oh, the first day when it washed up, I went down. Yeah, we took the kids down to see it. The little kids were running up to it. And Touching it. Climbing up on top of the whale, standing on it, and get the pictures taken. <laughs> Sold hot dogs or something. Made a little money. <laughs> <laughs> I think people in a small town handle death in a different way. They have to deal with it a lot more often. Everybody knows everybody, so when someone dies, the whole town grieves. I actually went down there. It was coming on to sunset, and I sat on the beach and smoked a cigarette and bawled my eyes out. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I done. And I, I never went back down. And we lived probably a thousand feet from the beach. The mystery in the whole thing is how it got there. Nobody knows if it died off in the bay and floated ashore, or whether it grounded itself out and died on the beach, or whether it just got confused. Nobody knows. It washed up on the beach. He got snarled up, could have been. I guess that's what happened to him, he drowned. get and, clear. You know, this is where it wanted to be. They called the Coast Guard to see if they could tow it back offshore and let it go some other town. <laughs> but they wouldn't do it. Because it had already been a couple other places, and that's what they'd done. They towed it out, and Lubeck finally wound up with it. There was no boat big enough. And depending upon the way the wind was blowing, when the current was running, you know, some things were almost impossible to get rid of. I mean, this thing laid on the beach for days while the town was trying to determine whether they, how they were going to get rid of it. And it sat there. It was just possible, but because the government the didn't know the what to do. They were arguing. Yeah, One branch of government was around vicious circle. Arguing it was too big to move. You couldn't move it. You couldn't do anything. We're a very poor town. We're the poorest county in the state of Maine, and that we would be the ones having to put in the a deal small town in back. It was big doings. Well, the people in the town, in the town office, and the whole nine yards were all disturbed because, like any dead body, it began to smell. You know, it stink the town. A lot of people were saying, "We got to move out of here on account of the odor from this whale." See, you could smell it. Low tide smells around here, anyways, but this reeked of death. Rotten meat that sat in the sun for a month. You just take the cover off the can, stick your head in there, and that's just about what it smelled like. It was an oily, greasy smell. It was right in your nose. Oh, it smelled like rotten meat. Rotten fish and oil. The odor, they couldn't stand it. You know, when the wind was blowing that direction right on the town. They could smell it from miles away. As far away as Eastport, Maine, they could smell it. Oh, I touched it. Probably felt the same as what it did almost when it was alive, cold. They're cold-blooded. 
And it did have a funny feeling. The texture of the animal was... Big, big, big smooth piece of rubber. I touched it with one finger, and I had to use less oil to it's get the stench really hard to get off your hands. I put hand cleaner on my hands. I put straight gasoline. You have to wind up bleaching it off your hands, and that's what I wound up doing. And finally they decided something had to be done about it. It would come to the point where no matter what it cost, it had to go. They knew <laughs> yeah, something had to be done. It had to be done. It and they did done. something. One thing led to another, so they called Ramsell, a man named Ramsell. I was notified by the town of Lubeck. We contacted me to come down and dig a hole with that excavator. It was kind of a hazy, overcast day, and the sun didn't shine. And I think there was like a crowd of 15 or 20 people actually showed up. There were a lot of people, maybe 100. Hundreds of people. The word spread fast. Everybody in town was there. But I just wondered where are they all going, you know. So I went too. So we dug a hole as close as we could. And before I got the hole dug, he accidentally slid on his own and went into the hole. Sort of graceful. I mean, it was so big, it just took its time. Just sort of the side caved in a little bit. He rolled in, he slipped in and rolled up, belly up. When they finally rolled it into the hole, you know, everybody sort of quieted down. And, and they, they were kind of respectful. They were kind of sad to see it go. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Something that, that you never think of, dying. You always hear stories that a, a whale is a passed-on fisherman's soul. Made me think how small I was. Yeah. There's a lot of people that think, oh, I'm so big, I'm so great. No matter how powerful they are, something will happen in life that will cause people to say, how small am I anyway? We're both mammals who have reached the pinnacle of, of our place, and uh, they, they just seem to be close to us. I feel close to whales. And we buried it six feet over the top of it. Dug up gravel and stuff and covered it all over. And I've dug grave, you know, for humans here in Cutler also. So it just seemed different to bury something with no box. <laughs> just putting raw earth right back onto his body. You picture him as being immortal, like a free soul, free will out there. You, you just don't see him dying. It, it was sad. It was very sad. And it took about two and a half hours, three hours to dig the hole and then fell it back in. And by noon time, we was all finished. I think I got like $300 buried with things. And then the town of Favor, actually. Maybe the whale, too. How do we know? It was just a day's work for me to, to help bury a whale. I mean, it was an oddity that to bury a whale. Just something it just weird that work. it happened and something unforetold. And if you never did see it, <laughs> you couldn't understand it, you know what I mean? And as far as I know, it's still there. He's still laying there. That's about all I can tell you about the whale. I haven't been down there since. Maybe I'll go down and take a stroll over. <laughs> That's the way things went. And uh, this is from Mars Island and Rollback, Maine. Just another fish story. <laughs> <laughs>